What's up guys? I'm going to be giving you guys some tips, some beginner's tips for Deus Ex Human Revolution for those of you that haven't played it or just started to play it or you're probably in the in Europe and you're going to be playing it tomorrow. I'm going to be giving you some beginner's tips that I think will be useful because I was kind of confused when I started off. I was like, what? Because it is a very different game. When you compare it to a shooter, it's very different. When you compare it to an RPG, it's very different as well. And that's basically what it is. It's like an RPG shooter. Especially when it comes to the gameplay and the controls. It's just, it's different. But uh, you do get used to it. So don't be like, oh, this is stupid. If you guys saw my video that I did with Mac Milton for one of my Dedication Tuesdays, we talked about Deus Ex, and he mentioned that um, you can't just go into a room and like kill everyone because they will kill you and you do die like really fast. And he was playing on hard. Now I'm playing on normal, which is called Give Me a Challenge, and I still die really fast. So I could just imagine how hard it must be on hard. So it's not like those shooters where you could get shot like 20 times and you're still alive. You know, like something like this. <laughs> it's not like that. Like you get shot like maybe four or five times and you're dead. I've died a lot. But so far it is a very fun game. I am in, uh, I'm still at the beginning. I do like uh, how it switches from third to end and first. A lot of people I heard didn't like that, but I don't have a problem with it. I think it's pretty cool. But yeah, I am taking I, I'm taking my time with it. I'm trying to do stealth, which is in my opinion harder than actually going guns blazing. Stealth is very hard, so um, I mean you'll see because I am doing stealth in this mission. So here's some tips. Hopefully these help you out a little bit for those of you that haven't played it or just started to play it and you're starting, you're just starting to get the hang of it. Uh, these are some tips that I find useful. Okay, guys. So this is just a little brief um, explanation of what's on your screen. Uh, that top part is your health. The bottom part, there's like two little batteries when you start off, and that is um, like your power. Uh, you can take down people by like pressing um, pressing B if you have an Xbox, um, and he'll uh, and Adam will take down the person uh, without killing him. If you hold down B, he will kill them. Uh, but you use up one of those little batteries. And that last battery, the green one, that one, that one will regenerate, but the other one doesn't. Uh, this down here is your map. See those three? This is you, the yellow. Those three arrows right there, they're white right now. Those are the bad guys. Um, and that X is my, um, my checkpoint where I have to go. Now, when those arrows are white, that means that they have no idea that you're there. Um, if they turn yellow, that means that they heard you and they're going to start looking for you. And if they turn red, then that means that they know where you are and they're going to come attack you. Um, if they're green, that means that they're friendlies, so they're not bad guys. This right here is your gun and then your grenades. To go into cover, you have to hold um, the left trigger if you have an Xbox. And then when you see that, that thing come up, it says... Uh, hold A. If you hold it, he's going to go around that box. So he's going to go um, right there. So he's just going to go around it without getting out of cover. If you tap A, he's going to roll and go all the way over there into the next cover. But you have to hold uh, the left trigger the whole time if you want to stay in cover because if you let go of it, he's going to get out of color, cover like that. And I got noticed. See how one of those is yellow? This guy's coming over here. He's, he's already looking for me. He's probably going to find me. It's going to turn red. Yeah, see? I think one huge tip that I could give you if you want to play stealth for this mission, I'm actually still like in the beginning. Um, this is my first mission, so I haven't played too much. But uh, one big tip if you are going to go stealth um, and not kill anyone, um, just you know, take down people that are that like non-lethal takedowns, and like use um, use tranquilizer guns. If you want to do that, you want to try to avoid being seen. 
and you want to save as many times as you can. So try to save as much as you can because they uh, it's kind of like trial and error because if you go into a room and all of a sudden there's a guy right there that you had no idea was there, uh, you have to start that over so that he doesn't so that he didn't see you that next time. It's almost like tri trial and error when it comes to stealth. Because um, if I, I believe if you um, avoid being seen by anybody, you do get like extra experience points. I think it's called Ghost. But if you're going like guns blazing and doing lethal takedowns, um, it's a little bit easier. You want to be very careful though, because if you do get seen and you get shot, you will die very soon because your health does not regenerate fast. So what you want to do, what you want to try to do, now remember this is not a walkthrough, this is just tips. Um, if you want to do stealth, you want to look at, you, you want to know exactly how many bad guys there are. And on your map it says there's three, because you see those little three white things. But sometimes you, um, sometimes you're kind of far away to even pick up uh, other bad guys in the, in the area. So uh, you could be seeing three on your radar, but once you get closer in the middle, you might see more. So you want to try to get a, a view of all of them. And then you also want to wait and see what they do. Like this guy over there, um, he walks down that way. He stays over there for a while and then he comes back. So you want to exactly see uh, what their routine is so you know when to uh, to go into cover and when to get close and all that because because they will spot you like see there's that guy right there he's gonna go down there in a little in a second so I'm probably gonna go that way but that's uh, the point with stealth so it is very hard actually um, to not get seen especially if you don't uh, I'm trying to avoid uh, using my tranquilizer I haven't used it at all actually, so I'm trying to uh, see if I could do it without hurting anyone. Even if it's not killing them, just you know, not using my tranquilizer at all. If you want to look at your inventory, like the quick menu, um, you, pr you hold down Y, again this is just if you have the Xbox, hold down Y and then that little menu comes out. Uh, these are your, uh, this is your grenade. Uh, this is your little power bar, meds, and then your guns. Whichever one you want right now, uh, this one is, uh, I have that one, the tranquilizer. If you want to change your gun, you just uh, roll this over onto it and then let go of Y and it equips that one. Um, to actually take your gun out, you just press Y. Just don't hold it down, just press Y and he'll take his gun out like that. And then to aim, press down on the right. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what this is called. This thing. <laughs> press down on that, and then it'll zoom. And it's actually toggle. So take that off. To crouch, it's this one. That's to crouch. You press it down, and he'll crouch. Press it again, and he'll get out of it. But when you're doing stealth, you want to try to be crouched all times. To get into your big menu, you know, your actual menu, you press select or back. Um, and that's, this is your inventory. <clears throat> you have spaces, like certain things take up certain spaces, like the sniper rifle takes up all those squares. Um, so you do run out of space. Uh, the shotgun takes up that many. I have this little square that's empty, so I could probably pick up like a, uh, well not a power bar, because I have power bars over here and they actually combine, so if I pick up another power bar, it's just going to put it onto there. So I have one and two spaces, and you could uh, move them around so that you could, uh, and you could actually like flip them over and stuff if you want to. To change the menu screen, up on the top left corner, there, you just press LB or RB to switch through the, the menus. These are your augments. I haven't, ha I haven't been able to buy any yet, because I don't have enough uh, experience points or I haven't been able to go to a clinic to buy them so you could either um, see I have these already I that's these are the ones you start off with like if I want that one it says buy so if you want that one you have to buy it either and it says down there uh, upgrade cost it's just one um, praxis 
And what that is is like points that you get after you like you level up, you get experience points. And that, down there it says available practice. I have none. And then up here, it's your money. The uh, next praxis, so that's how much you need to get to the uh, to get a praxis point, and then your total XP. That's the little menu that I was talking about. If you press LB or RB, it'll just go to the next one. That's your map, and then these are uh, like emails and stuff like that that you pick up and read. It'll save it onto here, so it's kind of like. I guess your codex, and then your missions. That's your first one, the missions. Your augmentations are actually controlled by the D-pad, so, uh, you know, this. Um, but I don't have any augmentations that I could actually, like, turn on and off right now, so that's why I don't really, I can't use them. And you get augments for your arm, your chest, your, uh, your eyes, your back, your legs. You have a few augments, actually. But again, you have to um, spend points or money to get those augments. So it's not like you could get everything you want. You you have to like focus on what type of fighter you want to be and get those augments instead of getting all of them because you really aren't going to be able to get all of them. And if you do, you're going to be lacking money to buy guns and stuff like that. Okay, this is hacking. Hacking was very confusing for me, but I think I have the hang of it. Um, when Pritchard can't um, hack these doors on his own, you have to hack them. And you do have augments to, uh, you know, increase your chances with the hacking. And, you know, uh, being able to get through the system without being detected, detected easier, because you can get detected. Um, but this is how you do it. I think you could sometimes find codes, like, on desks if you actually look for them and stuff like that. But you're going to hack it. Uh, you have five attempts and the security rating is 1 so I don't think it's very it's it's not a high risk of getting detected very fast so let's hack this thing right here is um, that red thing is the actual system it, when it gets alerted you'll see right now it starts uh, this little red line starts to go that way and these things right here are bridges these so um you start here now you see these this this one this one and that one are highlighted so I could click on those see that it, you could press X if you, hold, if you hold X you can see what you have and the flag it allows you to capture nodes that's the capture so uh, I really don't understand these terms very well that yet yet but what I do know is you could go you can either click on this one um, on this one or on this one since they are the ones that are highlighted see this one's like grayed out you can't click on that so what I would do is I always click on these now what you want to see is the bridges you could only go to the bridges and this is where you want to go this is where you want to end up right there so you want to go either this way or that way um, so let's start this. If you go on the flag, it says detection 60%. So you could get detected. Usually the first time you don't. See the little blue line lights up. And that turns blue if you can't tell. Now I'm going to go over here. The system's probably going to start picking this up. Yeah, see it starts. But you have a certain amount of time to hurry up. Uh, shoot. I'm going to have to go this way. Because I can't go that way. See, it's grayed out. So let's go over here. Turn blue. Now I can go this way. Shoot. There we go. Okay. Oh, barely made it. <laughs> I hope that made sense. It's kind of confusing at first, but then you just have to, like, you know, uh, see where you're going and all that. Like, you just have to look at the bridges that are highlighted and go that way. And if you get stuck, you have to go the other way. So try try to... That's, that's how you do hacking. Another little tip is that you want to take advantage of is sometimes these bad guys, see there's one right here, one right there, 
when you when I just walked into the room, you could hear them talking, like having a conversation. You want to take advantage of that because they are gathered around, like they were gathered around here, like in a little bunch. And while they're talking, you want to try to get to as many places as you can before they start to spread out. So when you hear them in conversation, you have to hurry up and try to find an area to go before they start patrolling. Another thing you could do, this is a little bit risky though, is if, let's say you're hiding here and you want to get to a certain place, like over there, but you don't want that guard to be there, you could do this. You could pick up uh, stuff that are hi that, that's highlighted like that, so let me just pick up that box. And you could throw it and may ha have them like start looking. Now they're going to go investigate down there, and you can start moving the way that you wanted to. So you could do that. It's ver it's pretty risky though, like, it doesn't always work. This is what I was talking about, if you press, if you tap A, it's going to go that way. If you, oh. <laughs> if you get, um, I wasn't being very careful, like I was right there, but if you stay under uh, cover the whole time, um, you could get really close to the to the enemies, as long as they're not looking at you, if they're like, they have their, their back towards you. If you are crouched or um, in cover, they probably, they, they're mo they most likely will not detect you. But if they turn around and they look towards your direction, um, it's easier for them to detect you if you start moving around with them looking in your direction. You also want to take advantage of everything around you. Like you have to, don't just, um, don't just go to, from point A to point B. Like look around and actually see uh, what you have to work with. Like if you spot, if you look around and sometimes you'll see like a ladder over there. Uh, try to get to the ladder and you can go up on the roof or vents. Take advantage of vents because right now I actually have to find a vent um, for because it'll make things easier but uh, you could also crawl through vents so uh, don't just go from one place to the other because there's a door on the other side of the room. First observe it and then and then take advantage of it. Uh, and of course this is more if you're doing stealth. If you're not doing stealth, if you're just going guns blazing, e either way, you can't really do guns blazing in this game anyways, because I'll show you how fast I die watch. That's a takedown, that's a lethal takedown. Watch. One, two, three, four, five. It's so like five, five shots and I was dead. So the, le the lethal takedowns are hold B, and to the non-lethal where he just knocks him out unconscious is just tap B. So if you're still on the fence on whether you should buy this game or not, if you are a hardcore shooter, and all you want to do is like get into the action like Call of Duty, boom, 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 kill everyone, and fast pace, you probably won't like this game because this is not fast paced. Like, you have to take your time, and sometimes you take forever in uh, levels, especially if you're doing stealth. So if you're that type of player, you probably won't like it. I mean, I would say look on YouTube and like watch some gameplay that's out there right now uh, to see if it's your style. If you're a hardcore RPG fan, where you love the story and you like to have uh, customization. You like to have some freedom when it comes to your character and what you uh, what you say and how you play the game. I think you will enjoy this game. I don't like first person shooters, uh, but I am liking this game. Uh, I guess because it has a little bit of both. It's not like one specific type of game. It's 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 a mixture. So it really doesn't bother me. I got used to the first person already. So I think this is more geared towards your RPG fan. Uh, just because it is a slow paced game, it's more focused on the story and you do have, you can customize your character, you could you could say, you, sometimes you have options as to what to say. But I'm having a lot of fun with it so far, um, it is going very slow for me, but
but it's worth it. It's, it. It looks like the story's gonna be really cool. I already have a bunch of questions as to what's going on. And the music is awesome. I'm loving the music. I haven't played it for very long, but my first impression is good job, you know, awesome game. It does get kind of frustrating, I will admit, um, just because it takes so long to finish a mission. I've been playing this damn mission since I got the game. So, uh, I mean, I haven't had enough time to play too much throughout the day, so it's not like I've been playing the mission for, like, freaking three days or something like that. I have been playing it for quite a while, um, so it does get frustrating sometimes because you find yourself having to reload and reload, and I mean the save, your save files. Because sometimes you get, you get caught and you get killed and you're just having to start over and start over and start over and you're just like, ugh! I can't play very long um, hours of this game. I always want to go back and play it.